Hello everyone, this is Acus Sadek, Pony CTF 1000. This is the worldwide version of uh, the same Sadek Pony CT 1000 as Japanese version. This was made from 1977 to 1979 and initially cost 600 American dollars. It was much cheaper than its direct competitor Nakamichi 1000 Mark III as it cost $1,600 and the performance was comparable. It was one of the first super decks of the 70s, but it was well behind the spec of the later ones, such as uh, CTF-1250 or CTA-9, but it did look straightforwardly good. It was made in version with uh, metal sheets or with a wooden cabinet with walnut veneer top and sides. You can see in a quick glance that the Pioneer CT1000 is a front-loaded deck with everything in the right place, no sideways or backwards or upside downs. Direct cassette viewing, simple insertion ejection, a safeguard dust protection with plenty of room for head maintenance. It's all been mechanically machined. This deck has pretty much everything what would you want from the deck by the 70s. A CTF-1000 meant to be a flagship for home users. In 1970s, Pony was the leading manufacturer and he was well ahead with the cassette hi-fi technology. They pioneered the front load design, memory stop and play, and they provide a lot of features for professional, semi-professional users. This was a three-head monitor K-pop deck. You could monitor your tapes as you record them. This could be done previously only with uh, reel to reel. You could uh, adjust your levels, Dolby or bias equalization, you hear the results almost simultaneously. The playback heads and recording heads are combined. Each head is manufactured separately before it is fitted in the combination head case. It featured two more to tape transport, one for fast forward rewind and one for record and play cap stand drive. The latter is a DC server motor with excellent rotational stability, driving a closed loop dual capstan system. Building logic control circuits automatically allow time for tape direction and speed change as you switch from one mode to the next. Both the bias circuits and the tape equalizer amplifier is switched on the front panel. Two bias sign choices and three EQ curves. Click noise during recording and playback is eliminated by transistorized EQ switching. Both the bias circuits and the tape equalizer amplifier is switched on the front panel. A built-in oscillator generates a test tone against which you adjust the front panel calibration controls. Then it has a feature of automatic chrome tape sensing transient response characteristics over the wide range of minus 40 to plus 5 dB are clearly indicated in this large we use. CTF-1000 is two-channel stereo and mono cassette player, electronically controlled DC motor with built-in generator for capstan drive. It allows you to use normal chrome oxide and ferrochrome cassettes. The frequency response for chrome oxide cassettes are 30 to 17,000 Hz with plus minus 3 dB. It includes microphone line and DIN inputs and also two line outputs. 12 kilos with a package. Consumption is 45 watts and dimensions are 420 to 178 to 362 millimeters. And this is the front panel. It's made from aluminium and its standard Pioneer size uh, 420 white and uh, on the sides uh, you can find uh, a 19 inch rack mounts uh, they are a really nice addition to this player and uh, uh, look pretty amazing and you can mount it in Pioneer rack so uh, from the left side you find power button when the power switch is on uh, uh, obviously you power up the machine and the level meters and the tape uh, backlight is on. Then underneath, uh, above, you find a pitch control. Uh, pitch control used uh, for playback uh, minus and plus 6% of speed uh, for playback tape. Doesn't work for recording. 
then uh, there's cassette mechanism with a uh, dust cup. Then uh, underneath you will find uh, buttons, control buttons for rewind, fast forward, stop, play and record. Let's have a look how it works. Fast forward, rewind, stop, play and when you want to record you press record and play button together. You can pause it. Then uh, uh, to the left you have uh, control buttons. Uh, this is pause. It works for recording and uh, playback. It doesn't w work for fast forwards and uh, rewind. Uh, then uh, to the right you find record limiter button uh, or switch. It works when the recording is still loud uh, for live recording and stuff. You switch it on and it limits uh, the high peaks. Then you uh, to the right there's a bias button for standard ferrochrome and chrome oxide cassettes. I'm using a uh, chrome oxide cassette. Then the equalization for ferrochrome, standard and chrome oxide cassettes. And then you have a uh, uh, switch for Dolby and MPX filter. Uh, it's currently off. Uh, this button turn Dolby on and MPX filter on. MPX filter is uh, it's cutting off 19 kilohertz uh, carrying fr frequency from uh, FM radios. And then you have uh, Dolby uh, recalibration uh, button well, when you turn it on, uh, it, it does 400 hertz uh, test tone, and you can calibrate uh, left and right channel. And then you have uh, uh, this is for recording, and uh, then you have um, a, a monitor, tape, and source. You can switch between tape and source. Obviously, I have source now, and then you have jack, uh, a quarter inch uh, jack for uh, headphones. And then uh, the top row, you have uh, a tape counter, uh, the, and it resets uh, when you have uh, 999. And then uh, you have reset button and memory stop and play. It works when the tape hits zeros, it starts playing again, so you can uh, use it as a loop. So you reset it on a uh, position you want it, and then you press this, and you always you rewind it back, and then you always place the loop. I think something like that, I never use it, it's rubbish anyway. And then you have uh, um, input, in input uh, potentiometers. For microphone, uh, it's also left and right channel separately, and for lining again left and right channel separately. And then you have output potentiometer. Though you have also a memory mark knobs, you can use these knobs to help you remember the level control settings. To the right you have microphone jack quarter inch for left and right channel separately. Then there's a beautiful level meters, they are linear. And you have uh, LEDs for peak, recording, Dolby and uh, chrome oxide uh, signalization. And now let's have a look on the rear panel. We will find uh, DIN connector for recording and playback as it was common in the 70s and 80s and you will find uh, output two outputs for left and right channel RCAs and inputs again 
uh, two of them for left and right. He was quite handy if you had uh, more systems. Grounding, uh, screw and uh, this version is multi voltage for 120, 220 and 240 volts so you can use it in uh, USA and uh, Europe and all around the world I suppose on switch 300 volt uh, outlet and the standard two wire uh, power cord so the main thing will hit your eyes is this two motor mechanism a cassette mechanism with uh, switches and solenoids and then you have uh, here massive transformer and uh, this is uh, a PCB for motor control I suppose and there this is power board and then you have a massive PCB underneath and uh, there's a, a co connector <coughs> Carts are connected, uh, so uh, yeah, they have uh, RCA uh, connectors. Then uh, these two carts are uh, Dolby left and right channel for playback, uh, Dolby left and right channel for recording. And this is a, uh, a flat amp. This is equalization board, level meter board, um, a little oscillator here, um, potentiometers and its board, then uh, this is re recording the equalization amp for left and right channel, and here uh, meat and board we said before and there test tone oscillator 400 hertz so yeah fa fairly complicated machine and i'm dreading recapping one day uh, this is all original i haven't done anything to it apart from cleaning and new belts that's all oh yeah and i forgot there's a little uh, mechanism for uh, for tape counter and it's equipped with a uh, photo sensor so once the tape stops when, once the sensor starts sensing uh, the motion uh, the tape uh, stops so you don't tangle it or you don't you don't cut your tape and it's really nicely built it's quite sturdy chassis it's quite heavy as well
Thank you.